Hey, how you doing? How are you, sir? I'm doing well. So, tell us your name and what you got for us today. Daniel, my name is Elliot Robbins, and I have a company called Connoisseur Stamps and Collectibles. And today I want to share with your audience um, some stamps from the German um, uh, colonies, specifically the Kaiser's Yacht, uh, some sets that were issued in the um, early 20th century, um, before World War I, and I want to give a little bit of a history lesson. Uh, I think it, it'll help us understand what we're looking at. Um, Germany was late to the, um, to the imperial colonial race in the 19th century. Uh, countries like England and France had already carved up some of the most, uh, some of the better parts of Africa and Asia and the Middle East, and um, Germany didn't unify until 1871, and the first emperor was Wilhelm II, actually, prince of, um, or king of Prussia. He and Otto von Bismarck decided that they wanted Germany to modernize and to be a imperial power and to be a um, player on the world stage. And one of the ways to uh, accomplish that was to um, colonize portions of the world so you could get ports for your merchant marine, so you could get naval ports to protect your merchant marine, and of course you could exploit uh, the colonies that you were um, invading for natural resources, and uh, the Germans were very late to the game. They were unified in 1871, and they started pursuing colonies in the 1870s and 80s. And they actually obtained four colonies in uh, Africa. Uh, one of them is Cameroon, the other is Togo. Both of those are on the west side of Africa. Then German Southwest Africa, which is presently uh, Namibia. And then on the east side of Africa, one of their, their, their only colony on the east side of Africa is German East Africa, which is presently Tanzania, Rwanda, Burundi. Those were the four areas left in Africa that hadn't been colonized by the British, the French, and earlier by the Spanish or the Portuguese. Um, the Germans came in and they occupied these areas and they issued stamps and the original stamps for the German colonies were stamps from the German Empire that were overprinted but in 1900 they came with their own set of stamps called the Kaiser's Yachts and it's the Yacht Hohenzollern which was about I think about a football field long it was about a hundred meters long it was a steamer it was very impressive and the Kaiser and other members of the royal family would cruise around the world in that yacht so what they did is they made beautiful stamps that are engraved. Um, there usually were 11 stamps, or actually 13 stamps per set. These are from the colony of Samoa. In addition to the four African colonies I mentioned, I mentioned, the Germans had colonies in the Pacific. They had four island chains. Samoa was one of them. Also the Marianas, the Caroline Islands, and they had um, the Marshall Islands. There were two additional colonies. One of them was a portion of New Guinea. They called that German New Guinea. And they even had a, a foothold on a peninsula in northern China, and that was called Kia Chow. So they had these 10 colonies. And additionally, they had offices in uh, Africa. They had offices in the Middle East. They had offices in China. But the 10 colonies all have these beautiful stamps depicting the Kaiser's yacht. So there were nine low values, which went from five fenning all the way up to the 80 fenning. And then there are the mark values from Samoa, the one mark, two mark, three mark, and five mark. And the stamps are considered among the most beautiful of the early 20th century uh, uh, stamps. What the Germans wanted to portray was grandeur um, and the fact that they were becoming an imperial power and a naval power and that they were getting a foothold throughout the world just as the British and French before them had done. They wanted everyone to know that they were industrializing and that they were going to participate in shaping the new world order. What's so nice about these five lower values once we get to the 25 fenning is that these were bicolored stamps and they're just beautiful. They're, they're really well regarded by stamp collectors around the world. And when we get to the mark values, we see the five mark value is bicolored as well. So these stamps are highly prized and highly collected. They're, they're very reasonable when they're mint. Um, we recommend that if you're buying mint stamps, you know, you should look at the gum carefully. If you can afford never hinge copies, that's outstanding. But if you can't afford never hinge copies, the hinge copies tend to sell for about a third of the never hinged value. And we recommend looking for lightly hinged copies that haven't been toned. 
a lot of the colonies were in tropical areas, so sometimes the stamps can be toned. Look for clean copies. Um, I also have some specimens on this page here. This is a used five mark value from the Caroline Islands with some beautiful postmarks. A lot of people who collect the colonial period are interested in used stamps and they want to find out what cities were in the colonies. What were the ports? What were the interior cities? This is a um, actually a one and a half, um, I believe that's a dollar value from Kiachai. Most of the colonies had mark values, but China used the Chinese dollar, and Germany, East Africa actually used the rupee. So this is oh. from um, German East Africa. It's a, a three rupee value. And again, the same bicolor as we find in the Samoa, slightly different colors. After the Germans lost their colonies, and they lost them early in the First World War, um, the First World War started in 1914, and by 15 and 16, the Allies, mainly the British and French, were already occupying the German colonies, those 10 colonies I mentioned. Here's an example of um, an overprinted stamp, and I believe um, this is from Samoa. The GRI overprint stands, I believe it stands for Georgius Rex Imperator. It's basically saying this is now a colony occupied by the British under King George V or VI. And, you know, this is no longer your land, Germany. This is now our <laughs> land. So this is imperialism at its best. The period of Allied occupation was very short. It was from the beginning of the First World War to the end. And that's why these overprinted stamps from all the colonies tend to be more expensive and more valuable. They're a little bit scarcer. Um, but again, you can collect these stamps used so you understand where they were and what cities um, they, were, they were used in. And a lot of the cancels are favorite cancels. I believe these are favored cancels from a philatelic envelope. But you can find postally used specimens too. And a lot of people who collect the German colonies like the postal history. Um, we should mention when we talk about the German colonies, the fact that um, while they were trying to portray growing power and imperialism and grandeur and their entry into the world stage, um, for the people that were actually the indigenous people in these colonies that the Germans invaded and conquered, life was not so grand. Um, basically, um, it was very repressive. It was very, um, uh, it, it, was, it was enslavement essentially. The Germans weren't necessarily, when we compare them to the British and French before them, they weren't the, uh, the kindest or the most generous of imperial conquerors. Um, sometimes the British and the French would bring in, in addition to exploiting natural resources, they would lay the foundation for schools and for health care and they'd build infrastructure. The Germans were late to the race and they never really um, got started in giving back to the indigenous peoples. For all practical purposes, the folks that lived in these, in these indigenous lands in Africa and Asia, they were exploited, they were brutalized, and they were enslaved. So what's so great about philately is that we, we study history, we study the good in history, we study the ugly part of history. I think imperialism in the late 19th and early 20th century is one of the uglier parts of our world history, but what's so great about stamp collecting, it's not political. We learn the good, we learn the bad, mm -hmm. and we try to tell our story uh, by looking at the stamps. So I hope people will consider um, collecting the stamps of the imperial period and take a close look at, um, at German colonies and German offices. These are widely corrected by people around the world. They've held their very value very, very well over the years um, because there is such a big demand for them. Um, they're interesting stamps. It's an interesting period of history. The Germans were not, um, did not colonize for nearly as long as the British or French or Spanish or Portuguese did. So it's a fascinating period of, of German philately. And um, the stamps do hold up very well. Um, just be thoughtful and acquire a good eye. Look for nice quality stamps. And um, if you buy wisely and if you're patient, you'll be very pleasantly surprised that your stamps will hold value in this area and, and very often they'll appreciate in value, especially as you acquire even a more uh, skillful eye and look for some of the fly specks and some of the irregularities, which you will be able to find. Um, I hope that's of interest to our audience. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you very much.